Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we're about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 100 and uh, page number 290. Today is our lesson number 230. Problem number 164 is what we are about to solve. Let's take a look at it. It says that x is negative. We are told that x is negative. Question simply is, if that is true, if x is negative, then is y positive? Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, they tell us that x over y is negative. Well, we already told that x is negative. If x is negative, could y also be negative? Could y also be negative? No, because negative over negative would be positive. So y cannot be negative. This tells us, this tells us that y can not be negative. Y would have to be positive. Y would have to be positive because negative divided by positive because negative divided by positive will remain negative and therefore it's less than zero. That's all. It's just a matter of figuring it out that part. The first statement is enough. The question was, is y positive? We just found out that y is in fact positive. Again, as, as I always remind you, the point here is not that we found out that y is in fact positive. The point is, we are able to tell one way or the other, we are able to tell definitively uh, that uh, either y is positive or negative. Here it turns out to be, answer turns out to be yes. But even if the answer turned out to be no, it still would have been fine. We just have to be able to tell uh, either an affirmative answer or, or a negative answer with certainty. So first statement is enough. A, A, D, B, C, E. Because the first statement by itself enables us to give a definitive answer, as we know now the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Let's look at the second statement. In the second statement they tell us, that y minus x is positive. Does that enable us to see if y is positive? Let's find out. Let's find out. y minus x, we are told, is greater than 0. Well, for all we know, y could be positive. A 5 minus a negative 7. x could be negative 7. Why not? We told that x is negative. x could be negative 7. It could be any number, uh, like a negative number. And here, any negative number for x would do it, a negative times negative becomes positive, and of course 12 is more than 0. Or, we could have a situation like this. y, we are, y we are told, y minus, y minus x we are told is more than 0, which is same as saying that y is more than x. y is more than x. Well, actually I made it far too complicated. Let's start again. I made it far too complicated. We didn't have to do the two scenarios here. This is actually simpler than I thought. We are told that y minus x is more than 0, which simply tells us that y is more than x. Which simply tells us y is more than x. In which case, y could be negative 8, which is more than negative 9, or y could be positive 8, which is more than negative 9. In one case, in one case y is negative, in another case y is positive. We can't really tell. Simply knowing that y is more than x does not enable us to tell, us, uh, to tell uh, if y in fact is a negative number or a positive number. Or rather, here they're asking if it's positive. Second statement does not do the job. Therefore, the answer is A. Therefore, the answer is A. You want to do one more? Let's do the next one. Number 165. The very last one on the page. 165 the question is what is the circumference what is the circumference of the circle in the first statement they tell us that the perimeter of triangle O xz is 20 plus 10 times root 2. Let's draw the picture first so we have it here. 
Here is our circle. We are given a 90 degree angle here. And here is our arc. X, Y, and Z. This point down here is Z. The parameter of O, X, Z, we have told is this. Now what we have to understand is that because of the way it's drawn here, it is sitting at the center. It says, what is the circumference of the circle above with the center O? You see, this is the center. Because it's sitting at the center, this distance from O to Z is the radius, which is the same distance from O to X. It's the radius. Therefore, these two sides are equal. And what do we know about an isosceles triangle? If you have an isosceles triangle here, and this side is equal to this side, if this side is 1 and this side is 1, then how much would this side be? Let's call it X here. How much would X be? Using the simple Pythagorean theorem, we know that x squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2, x squared equals 2, and therefore x is equal to root 2. This side is root 2. So in an isosceles triangle, what we find is that, in an isosceles triangle, what we find is that the sides are always in the ratio of 1, 1, root 2. If this happened to be 10, this would be 10, and this would be 10 times root 2 which is precisely the case here, which is why the parameter here is 10 plus 10 is 20 times a plus plus 10 plus root 2. So what this tells us is that the radius is 10. That's what this tells us, that the radius of the circle is 10. Well, if we know the radius, we can find out the circumference. So the first statement by itself is enough. The first statement by itself is enough. A, D, B, C, E. Because the first statement by itself turns out to be enough, we know now, answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. The radius is 10, and if we had to do it out, it only takes 2 seconds. Circumference is 2 pi r, 2 times pi times r, so it turns out to be 20 pi is the circumference. Let's look at the second statement. In the second, or rather, let's look at the yes, second statement. They tell us the length length of the arc x, y, z equals 5 pi. Of course, the length of the arc x, y, z equals 5 pi, because the length of the arc x, y, z, the arc x, y, z, because of the fact that this is 90 degrees, is actually one quarter of the circle. And if it's one quarter of the circle, we are told that one quarter of the circle is for 5 pi, a quarter of the circle is 5 pi, therefore the, circle, the whole circle would have to be 5 pi times 4, same as before, 20 pi. So the second statement is also enough, is sufficient, therefore the answer is D. And that was the end of that page. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.